All right, and we're recording. All right, well, Bob, thank you very much for doing this. We're really appreciative of your time and expertise in recruitment of string students. Um, if you could, can you just kind of tell us what you're envisioning for recruitment and what that might look like next year post pandemic? Thanks so much for inviting me to be here. It's hard to visualize, of course, what recruitment is going to look like, but my prediction is that a, probably a good mindset would be, okay, we're starting all over again. And so it's like I would be thinking of building my program and the strategies I would use from ground up and so forth. So, for example, uh, obviously we know how important that initial recruitment is because we're in sales. And if we're not in sales and we're not good at sales, we don't have a job, we don't have students. And so we really, really need to make recruitment a high priority next year. And so, for example, we want to make sure that we really have a slick uh, recruitment presentation put together, but at the same time realizing that every day we'll be recruit recruiting, whether it's actually in the classroom, outside of the classroom, or whatever. And so I thought it would be good just to take a minute and let's review from research what we really know about what works and what doesn't work in recruitment. And then we can kind of tailor it just quickly for the pandemic recovery, hopefully, that we're going to go through. So the first thing, remember, that we want to make sure that in recruitment, whatever we're doing, we really focus on the sound of the instruments because we know from research that the sounds really is what draws kids together for it. So we're going to be playing all the different string instruments and the different sounds, different effects that we can make and beautiful melodies and fun things that kids would like to do, but it's the sound of the instrument. The second thing is that the social aspect, and here's where we can really tailor it, I think, for the pandemic, because the social aspect of being together as a team, and the cool thing about the music team, particularly in the orchestra, is that everybody gets to play at the same time. We don't have people who can't be on the team. We're all there. And one of the things that, of course, we've all missed in the pandem pandemic is that we couldn't, we had to isolate ourselves to such an extent. And so we really want to emphasize in our recruitment, hey guys, we're going to be a team, we're joining a club, and this is a really club, and this is a club that's going to follow you and be a part of you. Hey, did you guys miss any of your friends while you were in, in the pandemic? Because man, you're going to be with this same group of friends and for a long time in the string class. And so that social aspect we can really, really push, I think, particularly with, in, in this post-pandemic. The next thing we want to remember, particularly in recruitment, is that by age uh, 10, grade 3, that kids have already gender typed instruments and they've already determined which group of instruments are easy to play, which ones are hard to play, and so forth. And so they already have determined, for example, that the violin is a female instrument, the cello is a male instrument, the bass is a male instrument, the viola can be either other, and also they've determined that for whatever reason, among all the instruments they could pick from, they've decided that string instruments are the hardest to play. We know that by grade three, they've already come up with this. So we have multi-gender kind of presentations as well. And we emphasize that, hey, we are all going to be members of the team. We can all be valuable in the team. And yes, we're going to have to work, but you're going to be successful. So we want to bring that out also. Okay, then the next thing we know is when we're going out for that recruitment, particularly after the pandemic, that we want to get instruments in the hands of kids as we're recruiting them because we know from research the more they actually get to touch, play, feel, make sounds on the actual instrument, the more likely they're going to sign up to be, to be able to be with us on that team. So somehow we figure out ways to put the instrument actually in their hands as well. And then the last thing I really want to bring up here for this post-pandemic is to remember that we have so much research that shows 
that if we're recruiting sixth graders or fifth graders that we as the year goes really spend some time somehow with the third and the fourth graders so that they know us as a personality they know we're the string teacher and they have gotten to touch and play an instrument and we're planting seeds for their eventual sign up. I call it pre-beginner recruitment. And we have so much research that shows the more that we can put those instruments in their hands and be involved with them, the more likely they're gonna sign up, which makes perfect sense. How do we do that? I love to just take a, a, a big double bass, give it to the general music teacher or the math teacher or whatever, and have it sit, sit in their room. And while they can, uh, they're going in and out, they get to touch the instrument, they get to pluck the instrument, they get to do all sorts of things with the instrument. And we're just, just planting a seed. That's all we're doing. And anytime I ask his teacher, uh, can I just put a string instrument in your class? Could I just lay it around? And you, you just let, and of course we don't put, you know, our strad that we have in there. We put some other that they can touch and feel but oh kids just go crazy and then hey we they get to begin to touch feel and be a part of that instrument then last thing is to remember what do we really know about retention we get them in the class and then how are we going to retain them in this post pandemic social activities of course and also parent involvement if we possibly can get that going in some way to build them. And then remember that we all want to be successful and that we know that when a child begins to not feel successful, either through note read, not being able to read the notes, not being able for whatever reason they feel like they can't keep up with everybody else doing it, then they begin to think, hmm, maybe I shouldn't do this. And so we want to build success and success and success into the classroom. So they just really, really want to be there. And we are the team leader, but we're all working together. And so that's exactly the enthusiasm that I would really, really encourage us to put it with the mindset of, hey, we're building our kingdom all over again. And it's a great kingdom because it's an art form that's going to be able to touch their lives for the rest of their life. No, oh, Bob, that's great. And would you say that it's really important to, you know, really celebrate those small successes uh, as we move forward, especially since many school districts will have two um, classes of uh, beginners this year? By all means. Once again, it's there's a place for everybody and we just build, 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 but we build it upon success. So, hey, your bow hand shape looks so much better today. Now we're still going to curve that thumb, but boy, at pinky looks terrific and so forth. And then as the kids get motivated and they move and move and move and more, we'll be able to get beyond the classroom and we'll be able to really build upon those successes. Fantastic. Thank you, Bob. Sure.